Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The land registry has been earmarked for a major upgrade. The effective date for the ban on styrofoam and selected plastic food service containers is delayed. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. As part of efforts directed at modernizing the public service, the land registry has been earmarked for a major upgrade. General Norville has the details. The government is continuing efforts to modernize the land registry with the digitization of documents. According to Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, the move will allow for greater efficiency, enhanced transparency and accountability in the land administration process. The completion of the digitization work will enable St. Lucia to adopt a digitalized, secure and searchable land information database, which will add value to the operations of the land registry by improving ease of access to, protection of and faster verification of documents and reducing the time needed to register documents in the registry, thereby considerably decreasing the duration of the various land registration processes. Okay, so currently we are um, continuing with the scanning of the documents at the land registry. This is a process which started approximately 10 years ago and we are near completion. We should be completing this scanning for digitization by August of this year. And when this happens, this is going to create a lot of efficiency at the land registry. It is a process whereby um, lawyers and clerks could um, pay a subscription fee, annual fee, where they could access the documents from the offices, also developers who also want land information and, and so on can access it at the, at the office, at the fingertips. So it's a wonderful um, project and I'm looking forward to the completion of this for the full digitization of the land registry. One of the features will include the interoperability and secure data exchange between Registry of Companies, Inland Revenue Department, National Insurance Corporation, Registry of the High Courts and other stakeholders. The minister added that the government has taken the necessary steps to address the issues that existed at the Land Registry Department. Every quarter we have a mass cleaning of the, the office for mold and other um, um, issues so it is back to normal the air quality is um, very good the vault is been cleaned and um, sanitized so at the moment the land registry is functional functioning properly St. Lucia will utilize part of the proceeds from the financing received from the World Bank towards the cost of the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project to support the modernization of the land registry for the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia last week hosted the Caribbean's first round of expanded constituency workshops for the seventh funding cycle of the Global Environment Facility, GEF. The GEF has proven a valuable development partner for countries providing over $18.1 billion in grants and an additional $94.2 billion in co-financing for more than 4,500 projects in 170 countries. The Global Environment Facility convenes an expanded constituency workshop to keep national focal points, convention focal points, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders up to date on GEF's strategies, policies, and procedures, and to encourage coordination. Now, in its seventh replenishing cycle, GEF will allocate 4.1 billion U.S. dollars towards conservation activity globally, of which 52 million will be programmed for June 2019 and $206 million will be allocated to the Caribbean for the next four years. Coordinator for the country relations at the GEF, William Ellers, says that every four years GEF develops new strategies, and therefore those responsible for preparing projects need to learn about these new strategies so that the GEF funds can be used efficiently. St. Lucia is one of the countries that has stability in the government officials who work with the GEF. And so that gives them good experience, it gives them continuity, and it allows them to understand the system better because the GEF is a little bit complicated in its procedures and uh, having a person like that or a staff like that is always very good. So, so St. Lucia has been effective at using the money that it has from the GEF. 
The country relations coordinator highlighted the Jeff Small Grants program as one that continues to make a difference in the lives of many individuals across the region. And on the other hand, I would uh, highlight the Small Grants program, which works directly with civil society, which also has uh, several very good projects here that not only um, produce global environmental benefits, which is the objective of this organization, that's why it's called the Global Environment Facility, but since they work directly with small groups of civil society, community organizations, etc., while they change the way they do things, while they change the, the, way, the activities that they do to earn their living, they earn a better living. And, uh, for example, yesterday we had a group here who have uh, developed a smoothie business out of a Jeff project, okay? And, and so all of them uh, are hiring more people, so you know, more people earn a living, but they earn it in a sustainable way. Over 120 representatives from 16 countries across the region participated in the expanded constituency workshop. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The CARICOM 10K returns to St. Lucia in 2019 and will be run on Sunday, June 30th. The route will be the same as the one used six years ago from the Rodney Bay area near the ramp to end at the South Plain Field VG. The event is scheduled to get underway from 7 a.m. It is being organized by several organizations, including the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the National Lotteries Authority, the CADICOM Secretariat, and the Local Athletics Association. Registration will begin here next week, starting Monday, at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The 10K is open to all member countries who have been invited to send two official runners, one male and one female. St. Lucia will also be asked to enter their two official runners, although other persons can register for the event. The Youth Empowerment Project is ready to move into its next phase, with a baseline survey set to get underway in the various communities targeted for intervention. Joanne Husbands is project coordinator for the program. Well, the next step in going into our other programs, we would be conducting a baseline um, survey in the community so we could better know what the beneficiaries are interested in and so that we could better serve them. Yes, we have our components which we'll be running, but we want to get more in-depth information about the persons we are serving so that we could um, tailor our programming um, accordingly. So we'll be carrying out our the baseline survey training with the surveyors and um, field officers June 18, so we're looking forward to that. And soon after, we'll be going into the communities to conduct the survey. Ms. Husbands told NTN Nightly that a number of youth have been supporting the project and have indicated keen interest in getting involved. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. During the 2019-2020 budget debate, the Minister for Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, announced that St. Lucia would be taking steps to reduce the country's dependence on selected single-use plastics, as well as other food service containers made of polystyrene, PS, and expanded PS, EPS, also known as styrofoam. Following the policy announcement, the Department of Sustainable Development continued working with its key stakeholders. This was to ensure that adequate preparation was made to effect the ban on the importation and the subsequent ban on the use, sale and manufacture of styrofoam and selected plastic food service containers.
Discussions resulted in an agreement to introduce the ban on August 1, 2019 and August 1, 2020, respectively. This means that any styrofoam and selected plastic food service containers arriving in St. Lucia after July 31, 2019 will not be released by the Department of Customs and Excise. Over a 12-month period, the use of these items will be phased out from August 1, 2019 until July 31, 2020. Telecommunications providers operating in the OECS have been applauded for supporting the introduction of number portability in the region. However, the companies have been called upon to do more to ensure that the OECS is not left behind in this technological era. The Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States has welcomed the introduction of mobile number portability in the member territories of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL. Dr. Didikas Jewel says the move puts the OECS in line with global standards. However, there is much more to be achieved. This may seem to be a simple thing, but it can be a huge productivity gain for professionals and business people, large and small, whose mobile numbers can now be as permanent as your name and go with you anywhere you go. As much as we applaud this launch, we must equally express our deep disappointment that we are still not at the stage of launching fixed line portability and we call on both Digicel and Flow to end their procrastination and deliver to customers in St. Lucia and the OECS the quality of service and the range of options that they require and deserve. Dr. Jules noted that the Treaty of Bastère caters for free movement of the people, goods, capital and services, a single economic space to conduct business presenting immense opportunity. Telecommunications is now an essential service that fuels global business and innovation. And if we are to make use of the opportunities that the digital economy provides, the sector must modernize itself and innovate. It cannot stubbornly hang on to old technologies, outworn privileges and obsolete business models. I reiterate the call that has been made consistently for the removal of roaming charges between the OECS countries. We need to roam as you home. Mobile calls between member states of the OECS should cost no more than mobile calls made within your home base. The OECS Director General called for the lowering of mobile data charges and the embracing of over-the-top services by the telecommunications providers. Dr. Jules indicated that the OECS Commission will be working closely with Ectel in drafting new telecommunications regulations that will demand service quality. The OECS, he says, runs the risk of becoming irrelevant if it fails to modernize. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça au ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bécine de l'eau. Pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. L'air ou kachi ou épan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole, ou ni pou mette ten an di de bak la. Toilet bol la, ka kole, si ou ka wè kole a de bol la avant ou flosh li. An toilet bol ki ka kole, ka gaspye an chai glo. Servi an bom pito an hose pou lave moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi dlo ou esi an pou ouze flew. Le ou sove dlo, ou ka bese manye an, ou ka servi tepe an man an. Sove dlo tout le ou ni an chans, ek chorje tout dlo e pontan. Ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour information en gouvernement, c'est le CGIS, à ce moment télévision nationale, puis à NTN, capitaine Nouvelle Arqueo, président Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette le site, j'ai marqué trois situations qui ont affecté le projet chimé national PIA. Aussi, c'est port, ça veut dire la WAD, et c'est le e port aussi. Trois situations, ça là, selon le gouvernement, c'est la condition, c'est la place, ça là, pas cordiale. Capacité est très limitée, 
avec façon facilité de connexion qui a placé le pays dans une position qui est très sensible si un caillot des as. Alors, le plan gouvernement, c'est pour renforcer ces divers bâtissements pays là pour ça supporter l'activité économique. Par conséquent, le gouvernement a implémenté un plan de développement pour l'année ici, pour l'année 2000. Ça, c'est 2000D, pour adresser 99 km chemin. Quand on a ces façons pour effectivement adresser et à toutes les situations, ça et pour corriger le problème des bâtissements pour l'année 2000D. C'est le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour faire des bâtissements au niveau de Stevenson King. Il a adressé Chimé en 11 powers, qui est plus de 100 km à longer et travail qui a fait pour continuellement occuper Chimé PIA qui a coûté 26 millions de dollars tous les années. Ce que le permanent Ivan Daniel dit que pour ces années qui j'ai passé, c'était un exercice qui était très difficile pour le ministère de adresser le chemin cette fois-ci à façon qui était mérité parce que l'argent pété, l'argent était si fi pour ça, pour ça c'est fait et que c'est dommage qu'il a pris tes café pour ce chemin ça là. Daniel remarque que la majorité de ce chemin paya ni brisé attention et qu'il a remercié le ministère de finances le même cabinet et le premier ministre Chasné pour faire available 14 millions de dollars pour procurer une bonne occupation pour chez mes Le plan j'ai en place pour commencer plusieurs projets de développement en sous pays et le premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné déclaré que le projet chez mes et ce n'est pas seulement pour faire la vie du monde comme il faut, mais aussi c'est une occasion pour éprouver la vie. Le premier ministre Chasné a annoncé que L'année 3, grand bateau touriste qui a bâti facilité à vieux fort et par conséquence de ça, qui a conseillé les résidents pour voir ça qu'on a une grande occasion pour prendre l'avantage du développement ça là et pour les touristes à tuer à vieux fort en dire point par souffrir, la caïni a assez facilité et service à place pour encourager eux pour rester en sous de pays à plutôt. Bon, 4 millions de dollars que le gouvernement de la République Chine de Taïwan, c'est un qui a vraiment cimenté vos relations cette ci et puis Taïwan. C'est le ministre des Affaires les étrangères à Taïwan, Dr. Joseph Wu, qui fait une révélation ça là. Dr. Wu promet que Taïwan a toujours fait tout ce qui est possible pour faciliter et assister cette ci à n'importe quelle façon. Il y a une compagnie des affaires ingénieurs de Taïwan qui a eu ce que pour projeter ce chemin ça là, mais là, j'ai une compagnie de cette ci qui a eu pour la réhabilitation. Chimé, Saltibus, Jetwin. Il y a un développement nouveau qui a trouvé pour le téléphone mobile à cette ci C'est un développement qui est en existence depuis l'année 1990 là, en plusieurs autres pays caribéens avec l'autorité pour faire télécommunication pour ce pour type de pays caribéens. Ça, c'est Actel, à ce moment-là, l'Institut national pour régler les télécommunications. Qui travaille et puis ces compagnies qui a produit ce service mobile à cette ci à façon pour offrir un service pour tout le monde. Pour ça, c'est un ce ce projet pour établir les mots portables, trouver en opération à Dominique, la Grenade, Saint-Kitts-Nevis, CVSA, et cette ci Plusieurs groupes grecs sont présents, à parmi eux, représentatifs de la compagnie de télécommunication Flo et Digicel. Ils ont parlé de l'avantage de la service à la capote. À qui façon il a échangé la vie, ces pratiques-là, et qui a présenté aussi un choix, à qui service il a signé, qui a pris, qui est available. Mais c'est l'Anel Ellis qui va se faire pour l'Institut national pour régler les affaires de télécommunications, déclarer le commitment pour que toute pratique qui a trouvé le service à la Sané Sauve. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour la communication, on est Guy Joseph, expliquer l'avantage du service nouveau à la, particulièrement. Les gens qui ont été chez et puis les compagnies, ils habitent dans une autre commune et pour ça, ils ont été mis en place de service. Donc, si vous êtes avec Flo et vous voulez aller jouer Digicel, vous allez à Digicel, mais vous avez même les mots à obtenir avec Flo. Ça va écouter aux pièces l'argent pour ça faire ça. Ça, c'est un programme dont nous avons travaillé ensemble dans ces pays, c'est Vincent, c'est Lissi. Dominique, la Guinades um, et Saint Kitts. Ces pays ensemble nous travaillons et nous d'accord à nous calmer bagay en place. Dat si on moun vle kite yon kompani ek ale a lot kompani a, i pa kay ped limoy. I sa chen même limoy. 
Je ne sais pas si je suis un homme qui est un homme qui est un homme qui est un homme qui est un homme tout ça, c'est en même direction pour libérer les services de télécommunication. Ah oui, Jean. Là, nous regardons la euh, position des customers. Ou quand je vois des gens qui ont une compagnie, qui veulent quitter la compagnie, mais parce qu'ils veulent que les gens ne soient pas quittés. Donc, nous regardons que ça n'est pas vraiment libéralisé de manière nouvelle. Mais à présent, parce que ça a quitté avec Chen même Limoa, c'est plus les gens libres pour ne pas faire ça, ils ne veulent pas faire ça, ils ne veulent pas faire ça. Et pour nous, et pour ça, je dis, je suis d'accord avec la compagnie, je suis d'accord avec la compagnie, je suis d'accord avec la compagnie, je suis d'accord avec la compagnie. Selon Actel, la compagnie avait aussi un service pour le téléphone qui est un peu à Kai, plus tard à l'année, pour tout le monde. En Kai, là aussi. Et, puis, mesdames, ça c'est côté nous à toi, bout. Nouvelle là, mon cas, merci autant pour garder. Mon cas, bah, il y a une invitation. Pour chercher plus moi encore, si tu es conservé la vie, les gars, ils peuvent se l'autre. Nouvelle à quoi, y'a Après ça, mon cas, vie, ils peuvent se trouver. Nisha. Merci, Opel Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies with a few light showers. A weak tropical wave is expected to produce cloudiness at some showers, mainly across the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles, during the forecast period. Two other tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 5.24 p.m. and will be low again at 9.46 p.m. The tide for VFR Bay was high at 6.31 p.m. and will be low again at 11.13 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.34 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.